Hello, my Zim community. It's Diadem37 here, bringing you a different tutorial today. Um, we're going to be going over a controversial subject, which is mouse DPI. And so without going too much into the other stuff here, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty big topic to go over. And I do have gameplay footage as well as the configuration to go over with you guys. So I'm going to try and go through this as fast as possible. So on the chart behind me, we have an analog signal, low DPI, and the high DPI. And you are 100% right when you say low DPI gives you the best aim assist results. It does. You can apply like two, three smoothing, and it'll pretty much give you that straight analog line. Whereas that high DPI, as you've seen in my configurations, my smoothing's at like 15. Now, my goal for my configurations are to build muscle memory is so that you are not depending on aim assist. So I'm on PC. I still play on PC. I shouldn't say I'm on PC. I'm native to PC. And when I play on PC, I'm usually running a thousand Hertz, thousand DPI sensitivity of one on most games, because that is going to give you a one to one or a relative one to one on PC. Uh, now on PC, you can make rapid mouse movements and flick shots. But we need to understand that we are emulating an Xbox or a PlayStation controller. And that rapid mouse movement is equal to this on controller, which doesn't get you very far. We all know this. We've all experienced this. Where you, wake, um, uh, you try and flick and you don't even get a quarter of a turn on your screen. So. We're never going to be able to do it with Zim unless you start playing with ballistic curves and all that stuff. And guys, it's going to ruin your muscle memory. So I have myself set up that when I, I, I do sometimes, you know, do that with the mouse. I have to go back to the center. But I also have my sensitivity set up that if I want to make a 180 turn with half of my mouse pad, well, that's 180 with a nice steady motion. But even on PC, that nice steady motion is going to translate into a 180. I don't need to flick to 180. I can. It's nice. It's fast. But I don't have to. So this is where it, it does correlate with PC. Um, so back to DPI or CPI. So DPI dots per inch, CPI counts per inch. This is just how it's uh, explained um, when you're buying a mouse. It's most commonly used as DPI, but realistically, uh, the term is counts per inch. How many counts is my mouse doing within, how many pixel counts is my mouse doing within an inch of movement? It's, it's a little bit easier to understand it like that than dots per inch. So dots per inch is how many dots in a select space of pixels is that mouse going to read. Okay, so that's for PC. For the Zim, yeah, it still correlates like that, but it's picking up every little movement. As you can see in the top bar there, that's 25,000 DPI. Even though I think I'm moving straight, any little movement that I'm making gets picked up. Okay, so this interferes with aim assist. This boggles aim assist because aim assist is used to reading a straight analog signal, which is why low DPI will provide you the best aim assist. Now, if I add 15 smoothing to that high DPI, I'm pretty much getting a straight line, which is why at 15 smoothing, excuse me, I'm still getting more or less the same aim assist someone on low DPI. Now. Here's the key thing to know. If you add 15 smoothing to low DPI, you get a sponge effect. Now, what I mean by that, this is our mouse. This is our aim cursor. As I move my mouse, it lags behind. So with no smoothing, we're at a one-to-one -one with a low DPI. With high smoothing and a high DPI, I still maintain that with a straight line. So, okay, whoop de doo DM. What, what, what difference does that make then? If I want to reduce the aim assist at this point in time, all I realistically have to do is drop the smoothing. Most of the time, I don't get game jitter. So yeah, okay, to stop stutter or jitter, at a high DPI like this, with my configurations, three smoothing, maybe five, will stop any mouse stutter. 
after that, it is just to straighten that line and play with the aim assist. So that's more or less why I'm using such a high DPI value. So just to touch on that a little bit, guys, make sure if you if you want to keep talking about this, uh, you can always reach me on Facebook or you can leave stuff in the comments. I don't want to take too, too much time on that. But that's more or less why I like running the higher DPIs. I don't like strong aim assist. I want to be able to track my targets without feeling like a stick in the mud. It drives me nuts. And I know some of you have experienced this in higher tier ranked games and against really good players in pubs. And I'm talking Apex Legends here. So you have someone that's really good at strafing and then you get on them, but then they're out of your way. And, and there's a delay with that aim slowdown. You're really struggling then to track that target. Whereas if you reduce the aim assist and if you are, are consistent trying to get muscle memory and you know where your aim your cursor is going to land you are going to be much better at tracking targets whether it be on pc or whether it be on the zim so the next subject here i just made a little chart for boost and what boost is so within a four square box we'll say that that's one pixel and with zero boost a small mouse movement is going to be like that now with a hundred boost we're going to be moving over that that massive amount of space with that same mouse movement. That's essentially what boost does. Now, what if I told you that the game pack, right? The mouse translator that we use for the game, even at a hundred boost still registers it as a micro movement. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means there's only so little motion that you can make on an analog stick. And if the game pack is actually registering less than the analog stick at the minimum, minimum input, uh, the aim assist, again, won't know what to do. You're gonna get like either a overpowered aim assist, which I've encountered a lot lately with the new mouse translator. Um, so that's why with the first one I did in season seven, I added 20 boost, boom beautiful i got great reviews on that configuration and i've been striving to attain that with the new configuration or the new mouse translator sorry so that leads us on to the new configuration so i maxed out the extra turn speed specifically for the fact that at 110 fov so 90 is here now we've widened our peripherals with 110 FOV. Not so much our vertical look. FOV is more for a horizontal uh, viewpoint. So the major change that I made here was adding extra yaw and pitch. So our, our horizontal movement here, we need that extra speed, especially if, if you're running out of mouse pad space and you need to make that 180, you need to consistently have your turn speed maxed out. So I'm not going to spend too much time here. It's the same thing for our hip fire. Now, this I follow the default and what was recommended by Zim. Because the minute you start upping our response curve here, yes, you're going to get a stronger aim assist. But that curve affects how the mouse translator is going to work with the game. And, and the long run, again, it's actually going to slow down your end of turn rather than you maintaining a nice constant velocity to get that 180. Now the dead zone being reduced here at the recommended default, I just found it was too slow. It was annoying. It was just annoying. Like I didn't get the results that I wanted out of this configuration. And I did like the dead zone is actually the last thing I play with after building the configuration. Sometimes I do play with them in tandem. So that's that. Now, the last thing we're going to touch on here is the configuration. And like I said, why is this moving at 15? Because of the jitteriness of the high DPI for my configuration. And believe it or not, guys, if I'm playing Apex for, let's say, a week straight, that 15 drops to a 10. I don't keep it at 15. I leave this as a base mark, uh, base mark because if I stop playing the game and I come back to it, it's like, oh, this is weird. Okay, I need the, I need that small aim assist feel just to. Uh, okay, now the muscle memory starts to kick in. Okay, now we can reduce this back to 10. Uh, okay, I'm tracking targets, no problem. So that's that. And now in this new configuration, I added simulog, simulate analog behavior because it does help 
the game interpret your movements, interpret everything, and the aim assist responds to you correctly rather than be really strong at some points and then not strong at other points like when you're trying to make movements so with simulate analog behavior here it's keeping a consistent baseline whether you're stationary trying to snipe whether you're you, no matter what you're going to have a very good consistent aim assist here so the last thing i'm going to talk about is boost once again for this configuration now again remember what i said you're only going to be able to make such a minimum incremental movement on an analog signal well, I spent a solid week going through boost, guys, like really. And then at one point I said, why am I still at 20? What happens if I crank it up to 100? I didn't notice any difference in my micro aiming. So it's like, OK, what if I go to 500? Oh, OK, 500, I start feeling it jump rather than still being steady. So then I, I kept playing, guys. I kept going in between. So 300 was where I landed. You can go a little bit up, but I, I wouldn't recommend it. 300 is that sweet spot. And what I mean by that is 300 with a small mouse movement equals that small minimum stick movement that you can possibly make. So just to give you an in-depth explanation for this. So the next stuff that I have going, uh, once again, we're going to have Saab at 96. That's just my sweet spot for ADS. We're going to have the controls here. So feel free to pause that if you want to look over them. Or you can just use the paste bin from the last video. And uh, yeah, guys, this is going to be the game clip. So in this game clip, I had consistent squad wipes. Like I'm telling you, this configuration that I'm using is the most consistent configuration that I have um, made, that I've configured, that I've developed, whatever you want to call it. I am consistently landing 2,000 damage games or higher. I'm consistently getting better squad wipes, whether it be from, I mean, obviously there needs to be some intellect, guys. If you're going to rush out into an open with zero cover, don't expect to last long. Because uh, if, if my aim's good, some someone out there has just as good aim, especially with people running Cronus Zen, Strike Pack mods, like you name it, guys. The competition is tough. So yes, intellect, squad work, teamwork, it does all play a role. But with this configuration and with good teamwork and good communication, some of the best games and the most consistent accuracy and aim that I've ever had. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Like always, make sure to comment below if you have any other questions. Uh, if you want me to go on a live stream on YouTube so we can talk about this more, that's just an idea I had floating around as well. Um, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see or stay up to date on the latest content. Guys, thanks again for watching and enjoy the gameplay. There were some really, really solid squad wipes in these two games. I will catch you in the next video. Guys, I need help, I need help, I don't need to do that.